football used to cover up my tracks for everything. Mm. So like I was like, I was wilding, but my name came, I'm like, nah, not the football player, I don't believe that. <laughs> so I'd be like, all right, for sure. People don't understand, like, around high school, if you weren't playing sports or you were smart, or if you didn't have nothing going for yourself, you weren't in tune with school activities, you was considered a bum. I just wanna um, I just wanna thank God. It's just this just show you that God real, we back to back state champs. And I just wanna say that I did it for my granny, you know? It's just very emotional feeling. I just don't know how to react to it. I don't, the type of person I am, bro, I don't say shit to people. I ain't, I ain't no shit starter. But once you start it, right, you're, you're I'm responding. gonna do everything to end it. And that's not even an option either. Uh, cops? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You ain't no winning against them. Yeah. Like, just leave. Leave them alone. These niggas keep mentioning me, but I will go lie about these niggas every day. These niggas gonna hate me. I will make <laughs> everybody block me, boy. Hey, yo, squad. What's the drill? Back with another video, man. Jacksonville, Florida is a talent hotbed, but it's also filled with hot lead. With drilling at an all-time high and clout being the biggest substance on the market, all eyes have been on Jacksonville. Rappers like Young and Ace and Julio Fulio have made their names in the game. Two talented artists that unfortunately have been overshadowed and covered by their own smoke. But out of the smoke comes a fairly new addition to the game with extreme talent, J. Breezy. J. Breezy has had quite a life in a short amount of time. Barely in his 20s, Breezy's seen the streets, he's seen the cage, but he's also seen notable success on the football field. A Jacksonville State champion who ultimately had to fall victim to a beef he was surrounded by but not directly in and was no longer allowed to pursue his sports dream. Left with no choice but to hit the booth, he's been doing just that and doing it with a vengeance. Determined to stay out of the street beef in Jacksonville, J. Breezy is a man on a mission, and with any luck, he'll climb the ladder of success. But just how did J. Breezy get to where he is now? How did he lose his shot at sports stardom? And just how did he survive this long without falling prey to the wicked streets? We gonna find out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. J. Breezy is a rapper from Jacksonville, Florida. He hit this planet on February 22, 2002. Growing up in what he would consider an average environment, J. Breezy grew up with his mother and sister in Jacksonville, Florida. His dad was in and out of jail and he wasn't really present throughout his childhood. What, what were you like as a kid and shit? Uh, I you, was you grew up with both parents? Uh, nah. Like, I had my dad in my life, but he was like in and out of prison, in and out of jail and shit. Okay. Since the age of 11, Breezy was dabbling with the mic. Him and his homies would listen to underground rap from Detroit in particular. That was his favorite rap, and he was heavily influenced by rappers like V's and Babyface Ray, who was still bubbling locally when bro was coming up. Hey, everybody got on it late. We was already on that shit. We was already listening to V's and Babyface Ray and all them. Yeah. Like, we was already listening to them niggas, bro. So it was like... I picked up on that shit. If you really listen to his music, the influence is actually quite clear. J-Dot was not the usual youngin' in his hood. He actually was gifted at sports. Before he started the bang, he was already earning stripes with the gridiron gang. Football really was his calling at one point. Around high school, if you weren't playing sports or you were smart, or if you didn't have nothing going for yourself, you weren't in tune with school activities, you was considered a bum. Facts. You feel me? You was considered a bum. You feel me? I was in tune with sports because I, you feel me? I like it. I love sports. I still love sports to this day. You feel me? So I'm more in tune with that. So that's what I was into. That's the only thing I was into in high school anyway. Yeah. Even though he was gifted, nowadays people don't focus on that and try to instead choose the clown on bruh for doing sports. I guess people figure it's only one type of field you could practice on to get credit in these streets. There were claims that he didn't really live what he was rapping. Okay, and people give you a hard time for you to put, for playing sports in your past. Yeah. As if you're not what you rap about because you used to play sports. Yeah. And you as though, well, what I took from that, that kind of got under your skin a little bit. On the low. However, bro wouldn't let this get to him. He kind of pity those who never really had anything they could be proud of, let alone something that didn't involve thugging. I ain't ashamed to say I played football. I done won state championship, you feel me? Like, that's something you should be a, you should be proud of. Like, that's an accomplishment. Like, you want something, you feel me? Niggas that ain't never had shit, that ain't never, you feel me, tried to be something in life, of course they gonna try to make fun of that, you feel me? So I just look at it like, bro, I accomplished something, you did, you feel me? So you can laugh all you want to. My name down in a book as a champion, 
You feel me? So like, just imagine if he would have taken it as far as he could. The only thing that's as terrible as wasting a mind is wasting talent. However, sometimes when survival is your main priority, you really don't have the luxury of pursuing your gifts. Never mind the fact that you already being looked at as the man of the house. Things got so grim for Breezy at times that there wouldn't even be any food in the crib. Faced with this ugly reality, of course he got pushed more towards the streets to make paper. Things got so wild that just after winning the state championship with his high school, bro was sent away to a level A program as a result of an armed carjacking charge. Being off the streets and not having the outlet that sports gave him, he began to start to tap in his 11-year-old self and get back to rapping. This time he would take it more serious. While inside he would rap for anybody with two ears, he'd call people from home to tell them that he was serious about rapping when he got back out of the program. When he got free, he started making songs and he was actually getting some traction for real. Then before you know it, he was locked up again for a gun charge. Crack off. Or, or no, you said you got arrested for the, the car thing. So is that when you kind of like, you get locked up and then all of a sudden that kind of turns you on to the street shit more? <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, that's kind of what I was assuming. Nah, like, you know, I bet that people that were clowning him for playing sports had nothing to say at that point. I know for a fact they wasn't clowning him for getting locked up and not playing football. You know why? Because as long as he was getting locked up for stupid BS, they didn't have to worry about feeling inferior for not having anything special going for themselves. Hate is funny like that. Luckily enough, J. Doc got out in time to still be in high school, telling his coach that he was done with all the BS. His coach responded, you either gonna pick one or one gonna pick you. As soon as he was released, he dropped first week out with his ankle monitor on. Before he knew it, the song had hit 400,000 views on YouTube. Unfortunately, even while being blessed with this milestone, J. Dot was truly at his breaking point. He got kicked out of his house after going at it with his moms and started living with his cousin. They are now on good terms, but back then, it was chaotic, not only between J. Dot and his mom, but also him and his sister. Fellas who grew up in the same house with all women know exactly what he probably was going through. At this point, school and the streets started to collide. It was a head-to-head -head match that J-Dot wasn't able to suit up and handle on the field. The school resource officer allegedly overheard a student claim that somebody was trying to act tough and saying that J-Dot better not come out that gate of the school in front of the officer while acting like they were armed. They then relayed the message to the front office and police were called. J-Dot was then picked up from school. The principal told him that there was a threat made against you and I need you to get off the school premises. We'll let you know when you can come back to school. Although it would appear that his best interest was at the heart of the school's decision, it turns out their negligence threatened his future just as much as the alleged hater. Months went by and he didn't hear anything from the school. Eventually, he was told that he could go back to school, but sadly, J. Dot had missed too many days and wasn't allowed to attend class for the rest of the year. That's messed up, bruh. And J. Dot took that as his last straw for his academic career. Point, and that shit, that shit caught up with me towards school and shit. So like, niggas started doing little lame shit like, coming to the school and shit. Oh yeah, it got shut down, right? Yeah, so yeah. like, then it got to a point where like, the principal was like, oh, this is not a safe environment for you. You don't need to be here because you're making it danger for other kids that go here. The school was trying to push him to attend an alternative school to get a GED, but he had already had no interest in school and the only thing that pushed him to graduate, football, had been stripped from him. It was at that point that he said F it. Now that we got that out the way, now we have to give you the background context to his music as his career was still in its infancy. Being a Jacksonville boy, you already know there was a fair share of drama surrounding bruh. It was inescapable as people that he was cool with were actually tied up in the beef. Thus, it became inevitable that he was going to have to pick a side at some point just to be able to move around. I done lost some brothers, so it's like, you feel me, it can't, it's not just one killing, you feel me, that'll be a turning point because it's like, yeah, it's the same pain, but it's like, you know, you feel different types of ways for different people. There are two main sides to this well-documented beef in the city. In one corner, you got Spinner Bands and Young and Ace and their alleged squad 187 boys, the ATK. Then in the next corner, you got Julio Fulio, who's allegedly tied to the KTA. J. Dot Breezy started hanging around ATK and then when he was around 18, but he had been around them brothers since he was a child, even though they claimed they didn't know who he was until recently. J. Dot was always the youngest in the groups that he hung out with. Supposedly back in the day, J. Dot Mom Dukes was best friends with another woman whose son lived where Spinner Bands was from in the east side of Jacksonville. J-Dot would visit them back in the day, and this was when he met Spin and with other members of the 187 boys when they first started spitting and all that. A long, long time ago, my mama, best friend, 
like that she like family and her son is from my from West Spencer from Out East uh -huh. and uh I used to go out there a lot when I was little, and I always used to see spins. But this one, they was lit way back in the day, like oh, okay. way, way back. At this point, j Dot was an innocent kid with no affiliations. He stated in an interview on No Jumper, I wasn't really on no gang-ish. j Dot says he recalls these interactions with the group amazingly because the 1A7 boys were trying to make something of themselves. That was something that he didn't really see when he was coming up. At the time, Jacksonville didn't have anybody making it out of the city, and no one had the spotlight. The music scene was dead. It gave him hope. If they could do it, I could do it. Before going to prison for his strap charge, Jade Out was cool with both sides. It was while he was in prison that all of the Jacksonville gang shenanigans really started to go down. By the time he got out, it was World War in the streets of Jacksonville. Jade Out looked at the situation as, I'm cool with everybody. They beefing, but I ain't beefing. J. Dye knew that he would have to pick a side, and this was one of the reasons why he had to stay home from school. People on both sides would go into the school and make threats about J. Dot, even though he wanted no smoke. He ain't even started rapping about the streets yet. He had only dropped one song, No Disses. The incident with the school impacted him to the point where he now technically was rumored to have gang affiliations and it made it impossible for him to get a job. His only option was rap. He had no mentors, it was just him and his brother Rollo who had his fair share of street life. You feel me? We had, um, I had my big brother Rollo. He like family, he like my cousin. Rollo you know? from Atlanta? Nah. Oh, nah. different Rollo. But he my, he my cousin or whatever, but like he was like, he's just big bro. Right. You feel me? Like, cause I know big bro was in the streets and he was like showing me and bro shit. According to J Dot, he never picked a side. He was forced on to a side. After his strap charge, people told him things like not to mess with somebody because they didn't mess with him. J Dot wasn't like that. If that was the case, he wasn't gonna mess with either one of them. Rollo had grown up with Young and Ace and all his boys. Additionally, J Dot grew up with Queso and his brother because their mothers knew each other. But so you don't you don't stay in Jacksonville anymore? Or are you still around? No, I don't stay in Jacksonville. Damn, everybody fleeing the city, huh? Yeah, it's just, bro, he ain't even. It's just really that bad. Yeah, he ain't, he's not even. It was at this point that J-Dow worked on his first album, Creation. He went to the studio every single day to perfect his craft. It grew born, but he knew what he had to do. Around this time, j Dot started losing his homies to gang drama. One in particular that really hit him was losing Leaky. It really hurt him, and he thought about how just days before that, they was riding around on their bikes talking about life. A while ago, Julio Fulio featured a female artist named Lotta Cash Desto, who was now deceased, dissing one of j Dot Breezy's deceased friends, Leaky, in a track called Pop Out. She didn't know Leaky personally. Was she not involved in this bullshit at all? But then she just does this video with him. Yeah, and like we don't know her at all. Like, we right. Don't know her at all. Never heard of her. Never seen her. Because she's not from there. She's from Texas. She so it's she's totally she's separate, right? No, she's from Memphis. Oh, she's from Memphis? I thought it was Texas. Yeah, think, okay, yeah, my bad. Think, yeah. From here on out, it was J Dot's turn at bat. When the news dropped that Desto had lost her life, Breezy took to the internet to poke fun at her. He was criticized but didn't show remorse immediately. Now he can admit that it might not have been the best thing to do. Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, I could have been a bigger person than I said I ain't though. But he's no, yeah, I feel it. You know, in Bruh's interviews, he really seems to have good character. I can't even front. He seemed like a chill, laid back type of dude with a decent head on his shoulders. Nevertheless, J. Dye Breezy would go on to drop two hard body diss tracks in 2022 that really was buzzing on the internet. However, as of now, he doesn't really seem to be too worried about the ops, at least on wax. Julio Fulio, on the other hand, ain't letting up. Just recently, he hit the internet to post alleged paperwork that got Breezy looking crazy. However, the story hasn't gained any traction, so Breezy ain't been paying it no attention, which is a very smart move. Whether the snitching claims are true or not haven't been confirmed as of yet, so we just gonna leave that where it is. Nice try though, Fulio. Valiant effort. Since he came into the game, J. Breezy has been dropping dope track after dope track, banger after banger. With a style that's as diverse as it is entertaining, bruh won't be missing anytime soon. The wild thing is, Breezy really just getting started. He hella young and most importantly, still independent. He has an extremely bright future ahead of him if he can stay out of the drama and not get tricked out of his spot. The sky's the limit for Mr. J. Dot. All he really gotta do is stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.